Now, um, the Georgian uh, conflicts. Um, as you know, after the war in Georgia in 2008, the EU, uh, or, uh, at, during the war, the EU brokered a ceasefire, which led uh, to um, an unprecedented EU engagement uh, on the ground in form of a monitoring mission, in form of uh, talks in, in, uh, that have taken place regularly since then in Geneva, bringing together all the stakeholders uh, in uh, the conflict. Uh, I believe now that we need to go beyond the agenda uh, at these uh, Geneva talks, which focus uh, on uh, security-related issues and, and IDP issues, by uh, pursuing a, a policy of engagement uh, uh, that, that will ultimately contribute to establishing an EU footprint and, and leverage uh, in the, uh, the conflict regions, and also help to Europeanize them and make sure that they don't drift further away uh, from Georgia. At the same time, uh, it's uh, necessary to be uh, uh, include as a part of this policy a firm line on the formal issues. That is the the non the the fact that we are not recognizing uh, these entities. We will not recognize uh, uh, these. Uh, uh, entities. In fact, both the, the non-recognition and engagement are indispensable legs of one and the same policy. Uh, non-recognition without engagement is sterile and counterproductive. It pushes these places further away from, from Georgia. Engagement without non-recognition can easily lead us to a dangerous uh, slippery slope. Uh, examples of topics that we can uh, uh, address uh, through such a policy is education, healthcare, cross-boundary business uh, development, communications, cooperation on drug abuse, trafficking, law enforcement, uh, uh, and so on. Ultimately, everything contributing to moving uh, the conflict resolution process uh, forward. Uh, we need to do this, obviously, in close contact with the Georgian uh, authorities. Uh, we will not uh, uh, challenge uh, them in, in, in any way, but at the same time we need to help. We can help Georgia to overcome the ambivalence that still exists uh, in Georgia towards engagement of this kind. I would say there is a kind of tug of war uh, constantly going on between those who see engagement as a way of creating joint interests, <coughs> links, leverage, and, and so on. And those on the other hand who consider that uh, engagement uh, of any kind runs the risk of legitimization of the uh, current status quo, of the Russian military presence, and of the de facto uh, regimes. And this is where we can, as an important partner uh, uh, of, of Georgia, where we can mitigate those fears of legitimization <coughs> by maintaining a firm uh, non-recognition uh, policy. Uh, this uh, kind of uh, uh, ambivalence or dichotomy we also see in, in terms of the Jordan-Russian uh, relations uh, between those advocating a gradual opening and building confidence and those on the other hand who do not see a possibility for a serious opening before uh, the Russian uh, troops are out, or before at least there is a serious discussion uh, going on with also the troop withdrawal uh, on, uh, on the table. Um, uh, I mentioned the Jordan-Russian relations uh, here as a case in point also because they are in, uh, important not only for Georgia and Russia, but they are also important for the, for the entire region. Uh, I would mention uh, uh, Armenia as a case in point here, which is very much dependent on uh, much of its trade uh, with Russia passing through uh, Georgian uh, territory. Um, all in all, to come back where we started, the uh, eastern, our eastern neighborhood is still uh, a region in very much in flux. Uh, all the countries in one way or another uh, are looking to Europe, uh, and uh, this in itself poses a challenge for us uh, in managing the, the expectations of our partners uh, in, in the East. 
The democratic governance uh, in this region is still uh, fragile. Uh, uh, it's important to focus on this because it is a, indeed a condition for a long-term stable relation with the uh, European Union. Uh, this is uh, uh, a region uh, with, uh, as I mentioned, multiple uh, intertwined conflicts at several levels, community conflicts, interstate conflicts, all of this sometimes also in a strategic context which makes it uh, uh, very, very complicated and it's indeed necessary to address uh, the conflicts at all the different levels at the same time. It's also, uh, and, and, and this also reminds us that this is a region where the European role is uh, juxtaposed with the role and interests of the EU's two great neighbors in the east and, and south, that is Russia uh, and uh, Turkey. Uh, uh, and, and, and this needs to be, uh, to be addressed uh, uh, as well. Uh, Patricia went uh, into some detail about the Eastern Partnership. I will not uh, repeat uh, what uh, she uh, said here, but I will just uh, make the point that uh, the launching of the Eastern Partnership uh, was uh, extremely important for uh, our relations with these countries and uh, the region as a whole, because uh, uh, the, the uh, the, the, the launching of a separate program for the East uh, marked uh, an acknowledgement on our part uh, that there are specific aspirations, specific historical contexts, specific geography and specific reform agendas that set our Eastern, uh, your Eastern partners apart uh, from the partners uh, in, uh, in the South that are also part of the wider uh, European neighborhood uh, policy. Uh, the Eastern Partnership, as uh, Patricia mentioned, it involves a stronger political relationship, it involves functional integration through trade and, and uh, visa facilitation, liberalization. It involves uh, steps towards regional uh, uh, projects and regional coherence. Uh, it uh, uh, emphasizes more strongly than before the role of civil society. Uh, it also, uh, in a rather tentative way, but still uh, uh, provides uh, a window for also in, for involving in a constructive way the other regional uh, uh, neighbors. Uh, I think also that ultimately the Eastern Partnership can have an impact on the conflict transformation and conflict resolution, although the steps in, in this direction are still uh, very uh, tentative. Uh, there is indeed much at stake here for the EU uh, in this region. Uh, the future of our neighbors uh, uh, is at stake, uh, whether they are going to develop as open liberal societies or, uh, uh, or, or, or continue to go through cycles of, of recurring uh, crisis and, and uh, slide backwards. Uh, our relations with Russia and Turkey are at stake uh, in, in, in this region as well. And, uh, as I mentioned initially, the uh, uh, credibility of the European Union on the world, uh, world, world stage. Uh, and this uh, credibility uh, is, uh, uh, is, is uh, first and foremost uh, established by how we deal with our immediate neighbors uh, in the East. Thank you.